Hey everybody, in this video, I'm going to be showing you my new DWM setup. You might have seen my video called DWM with animations. And in this video, I'm just going to be showing you the same setup, but in more detail. So basically, I'm going to be explaining my different patches and what they do. And you can kind of think of this as like a DWM workflow type of video. But anyways, let's get started with the showcase. Okay, hey guys, so this is my new build of DWM and I have a repository over here. So it's called DWM Rev 1, which means uh, DWM Revision 1. So I made a new repository because I wanted to improve the old one, but I thought it'd be too much work to like update it and like add new stuff. So it'd just be better off to start from a clean state. So I cloned a new a copy of the base DWM 6.5 and then I started patching it and here's a list of all the patches I uh, you know patched in order and I'm just gonna be showing you what each of these do and talking about some other stuff so the first patch I have is the move stack patch and what move stack is is it's basically this patch that allows you to move around the windows with mod plus shift J and shift K so for some reason, DWM doesn't actually have a way to move around windows. Um, by the base DWM, you need to patch that in. So what this does is if I press Shift J or Shift K, so this moves a window up and down the stack, right? Before you can focus with Shift J and Shift K. So it kind of makes sense to have this key bind. Um, so here I can like move this window around and, you know, just do that. And before I was using the stacker patch, but I switched to move stack because it was easier to patch. Like when I was using stacker, it took, it didn't work the first time I tried to patch it, but this just works straight away. So I think it's a little better and it's basically the same thing. So like you just move windows around like that. Um, so nothing crazy, but this is a pretty essential package or patch. And I'm kind of like confused why suckless DWM doesn't have this by default because like how are you supposed to move around windows, right? Because I, I couldn't find any way to move around a window on the base DWM. But I guess they have a lines of code limit, so maybe they couldn't fit that in or something. Um, but yeah, anyways, next patch. Okay, so the next patch I added, and since these are in order, you know, this is the next one I added is the resize here patch and I can show that off pre pretty quick. So what you do is, um, I'm already showing it, but basically when you hold super and right click, that's how you resize a window. Basically it makes it so that uh, when you resize it, your mouse doesn't warp to the corner because by default it warps all the way to the corner. Um, but with this patch, it doesn't. So you can kind of see here, it just warps to the uh, it stops it from warping to the corner, which is a pretty small patch, but I think it makes more sense because I like having my mouse move to where I move it, not just like randomly teleporting, if you get what I mean. Uh, it's a pretty small patch, but I think it's pretty important. Okay, next patch is the Vanity Gaps patch, and this is probably what a lot of people think is one of the most important patches um, because basically it adds gaps, which are kind of essential for window managers usually because um, DWM doesn't actually provide gaps by default so you need to patch it in with vanity gaps and one interesting thing about vanity gaps is it actually adds a bunch of extra stuff like layouts like watch this um, like here's like the uh, you know the master layout so here the master window is in the middle and I can still adjust it and everything um, but the master layout is in the uh, middle and then also you can also do stuff like if I press super shift H or super shift L, it like changes the like size of these individual windows. And there's like a bunch of different layouts. But like this is like a grid basically. Um, and then here there's like a, see like a spiral layout and then, you know, master. But I really only use tiling because I don't really have a use for all these layouts, but uh, I guess they're good to have like, I can show you um, all of the little like little layouts here. So uh, if I go down a little bit, it should be down here. Yeah, so uh, this part, 
Whoa. So, what am I doing? Um, this part, there we go, uh, is basically defining all of these different layouts. So there's even more than this, but this is just the ones I have. Or no, wait, this isn't all of them. It's just I didn't bind my keybinds to all of these. So this is pretty cool. I like how it is like consistent with the original base DWM. Excuse me, the original base DWM kind of stuff because they're all three characters. This one is three characters. It's just using a backslash to escape. Um, and they all kind of make sense, which I like. Like, you know, like this one is um, like horizontal grid is literally looks like that. And grid looks like a grid. Um, centered master has a big M. Stuff like that. So that's what vanity gaps does. And there's other patches that add gaps. Like you can search gaps or something. Um, oh, well, there's a lot of words with gaps. There's like functional gap. I think there's like useless gap. There's like a, a ton of patches. But I think vanity gaps is the best patch that provides gaps. Next up is status all mons. And that means monitors. And this is a pretty small patch. All it does is it makes it so that it updates the status bar on all monitors. So here, this is my status bar. I'm using SL status, suckless status, I think. Um, and I added these colors, which look a little nicer. It makes it easier to see and some of these icons. And basically before on base DWM, it would only update the status bar on the monitor you were focused on, right? So if you were focused on this monitor or whatever monitor, none of your other monitors would do anything. They would just say like DWM 6.5, um, which obviously is not very good because I want to be able to check the time on any monitor. So this is a small patch, but you know, it's pretty useful. Okay, next patch is the per tag patch. I don't think I had this patch before. And basically it's like, I can show you. So uh, let's change it to this. So here I have like an M fact, so my master uh, window size is like this, but here it's like not that, right? So that's all it does. It's just like if you look at the uh, patches, not this one, if you look at the patches like description, it keeps the all these different things per layout, which for some reason DWM doesn't do by default, I guess. Um, but this is pretty essential, like if you're using a bunch of different layouts, because sometimes if you like change something on one layout before it would change on another layout, which, you know, would not make too much sense. But yeah, this is a pretty good patch to have. I don't know how I went without it before, but yeah, this is a good patch. Next patch is tiled move. Let's actually close some of these tabs. So tiled move makes it so... Before, if you didn't know, if you tried to move a window with left click, it would basically make it a floating window, which, you know, you don't want. So here I'm using super and left click, uh, and it's actually just moving the window instead. And usually I use the move stack thing with the key binds. But like, let's say I want to move to another monitor. Usually you do like this to move it to left and forward to a different monitor, but you can also just use your mouse. Like here, I can just drag OBS over here, which is pretty convenient and more like intuitive than using a keybind. Okay, so the next patch is unfloat visible. And what this patch does is basically, let's say I create a floating window like this. Um, so if I wanted to unfloat it before, there wasn't any way to do it. Like you want to make it back to tiled is what unfloat means. So before there wasn't any way, but this patch means you can press a keybind and it'll make it back to tiled. Basically, I set it to super shift Z. Here it's super shift T for tile, I guess. But I think Z is easier to press. So I have it that way. And this is pretty useful because like if you resize a window by default, it turns into floating. Um, and there wasn't any way to retile it, obviously. So you kind of need this patch to move it back, which, you know, is pretty useful. Small patch, but it makes a lot of sense to have. So yeah, anyways, moving on. Okay, the next patch is status 2D. So this isn't really for DWM. This is more like the status bar, 
but basically all this does is it adds like stuff like color you know so here you can see there's color in the bar so a lot of colors and that's how I got all this colored text and if you want to know how I got that you can go into um, SL status then I open this up and then yeah so here you can add like uh, what's it called like a carrot I think is called like this big up arrow and then C for color and then like a hex code and you can do carrot D uh, carrot for getting getting like uh, removing the color so that's what that does and that's how I added color to my status bar which I think is a lot easier to read if it's all different colors so it, it's a small patch but it's a very good patch in my opinion moving on we have the set border px patch and what set border does is basically you set the border of a, of a window so here now the borders are super thick right like these are some very thick borders so um yeah and i was thinking this patch would be pretty useful because like let's say i wanted to record a video and let me open up like code or something and then let's remove my bar i can hide my bar like with super b which is actually built in which is very nice because sometimes you don't want to always see your bar and it's a per workspace thing so that's even cooler this is just a dwm thing i'm pretty sure um anyways so let's remove these gaps so if i was recording a video and i wanted to have two windows i can keep it ultra minimal like if i had borders it would look like this but with no borders it's just super like easy to follow along there's like no distractions so that's what i was thinking about doing um but yeah that's basically all it does it just allows you to have a key bind to set the border so plus or minus one the next patch is always center and this is another pretty small patch so here always centered all it does is it floats all or sorry it centers all floating windows so let's say i change it to floating mode and oops or, i mean it doesn't matter but basically when you uh make a window it starts off floating whoa so there we go and i'm pretty sure it's dependent on the size of your last window so if i make this pretty big the this one's pretty big too so that's what that does and it's pretty useful for like sometimes a website might be like upload an image or something and it would just used to appear in the top left which looked kind of ugly but now it appears in the center because it centers all floating windows by default which is very nice okay so the last patch and the most recent patch i added is actual full screen what this patch does is basically it makes it so super f or your mod key which is super for me uh basically makes any window full screen it like hides the bar and removes the other stuff like the uh the border and this is different from like pressing f11 because if i press f11 the window knows it's like in full screen right because there's no tab bar here but if i press super f it like i still get this tab bar and everything but it's like actually full screen and it's pretty good for like most things like i can open up code and something oops i just closed it and I press super f and yeah look it just looks pretty good see with both of these full screen um and then I also have D menu, uh, my own build of D menu. It's not that special. All I did was I centered D menu in the center and then I made it a grid with like one column. So it's kind of like you can scroll down here. Uh, oops. So, you know, and then it's like three patches in total, but it's better than appearing at the top because my eyes are looking or my eyes are looking at the center at all the time so it makes more sense to put d menu like right in the center last thing i wanted to mention is i have all these animations you probably noticed um and basically these animations come from pycom and um pycom is like pretty interesting because you can get all these animations and transparency uh, but the animations apply everywhere you might have noticed like if i right click 
the animations like you know they apply to every like pop-up window and everything even my uh what's it called the thing that shows my key binds screen key yeah screen key uh has the animations too which is a little bit weird and i don't always keep animations on because I like it to be more responsive, but I turned them on for this video so you can kind of visualize me moving the windows and stuff. Um, but PyCom is pretty cool, and like it definitely makes your setup look a lot cooler. So it kind of makes your setup look like Hyperland without actually having to use Hyperland. Um, but it, it can be pretty buggy, I know, on some times. And one thing I've noticed is like when I switch a workspace, it kind of appears from my other monitor. I think that's because it's like gets set like really far away or something, but I don't know. I don't think it's a huge deal. And sometimes the windows like if I swap these out, you can kind of see they go on my other screen. Uh, well, you can't see it because I'm only recording one screen, but and that's kind of unfortunate. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my DWM setup, you guys. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what type of videos you want me to make next. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. See you guys in the next video.